jump in immediately to what heroes will be showing up. And it is going to be slightly different. This time, no Pango Band. A Tiny picked up and a Nyx Assassin. That's not a hero you see too often anymore. Five, no, and really three. only in response to heroes where there's already steady damage on the board. You know, you're going to get, uh, or how do people call it? Lingering damage. So, you know, the, the Bat Riders, the Ember Spirits, the DKs of this world. And I guess here it is just an answer to the Snapfire ult, most likely. Just cancel her from a distance. Best way to do it. But picking Mix Assassin early is, is such a double-edged knife, right? Like, on one hand, yeah, it's a great block pick. There's a lot of heroes that people just don't want to play into it anymore. On the other hand, if Nyx is not cancelling anybody, he suddenly becomes very reliant on the rest of his team Ten to do most of the work, because he's utility, mostly. Five, yeah, a uh, lot of utility, very good against a decent amount of it. It's one of those beautiful heroes that just counters a relative big spectrum of other heroes, which Coddle mm -hmm. is one of amongst them. Uh, pretty much denies oh, yeah. that pick, uh, which is pretty big in this patch. Um, but yeah, you don't yeah, really see the Nyx Assassin that much, which I still find surprising regardless. I always think that the hero brings, you know, it's a moving invisible ward, which is a big plus. It brings a decent amount of damage. Stun, mm -hmm. mana burn, especially against like Storm Spirit, who is really heavily picked in this batch as well. Ten yes. Seconds. Hey, you know which hero I like to see with the Nyx Assassin? Five seconds. Hmm. It's the DK. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. No, I was hoping that you'd say uh, Invoker, but you're like, DK. No. <laughs> DK. <laughs> what else was the giggle for? No, it's um because what you want for a Nyx Assassin is a lot of dark space to roam in, so you need to get towers down, and you want somebody who can follow up on uh, the initiation that you bring. So yeah, you're a mobile ward, you hit somebody, you stun somebody, then what? So ideally, you want a hero that does both, right? Take the towers down, provide the follow up, and a DK could definitely do that for you. One of the no, prime suspects here. Would you start off your draft with three Malies. Well, mm. DK is actually sort of right. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, it's... Mm. No, you're, you're correct about that. Triple melee versus pango? Not a good idea. And even Snapfire, because Buki Force Staff. Hard to chase mm -hmm. people down. Yep. I'm really seconds. already wondering um, if this Tiny is going to be a core at all. But support Tiny with also a Nyx Assassin? Like, your cores are really going to, have to bring a lot of gameplay, man. Yeah, I definitely expect that. I mean, they banned the heroes to make this a safe lane tiny, but I'm more inclined towards the mid tiny in this case. They add the undying, which is. I mean, it's pretty rough to kill these heroes on the interior side. You can say that. I am looking at some absolutely incredible team fight here from Interritus. You've got Pango, he's just a team Ten fight in a bottle. Remain. Pop him open, he rolls out. And then you've got. Admiral man! Tonka. Stop it! Interitus! <laughs> They're already dead! Uncaho <laughs> is a nice little addition to the uh, draft. They've got tons of lockdown, as Kips was already mentioning. And uh, now you just need seconds. damage. I mean, of course, Kunka can also go damage. You can even make it a safe lane uh, FCR Kunka for that matter. But you normally mm -hmm. want to add in just that little bit of spice while everyone gets held down. Yep. And yeah, this, this Kunga can still go to two lanes. This Pangolier can still go to two lanes. There's several ways to shuffle spirit. this draft around. Dreamer is going on with the Emmer Spirit. At the very least, the Emmer is absolutely unbothered by all of the area control that they've got going on here. He can dodge pretty much every single thing that's on the board. So that's good for them. But they, they don't have an answer to the Tombstone Dyer's in any way, shape, or form. And... They're also a little bit short on damage now. Our last pick is going to have to do a lot of work. And Interitus is just like, yeah, so we've taken out the ranged cannons, baby. Viper down. I'm imagining to see Alina go down next. That would be my other choice. It is mm. Radiance, man. Wait, Alina banned by who? By Interitus here? Actually, no, that's not because we only have... They have an Ember already, right? unless this is yeah, a very strange draft. 
Uh, I mean, you could offlane Tiny. I have seen that before, but yeah, you're completely right. I, I don't even know what you do here, man. I mean, you'd put an offlane Tiny with an next assassin nice. against an Undying. That means you've already lost the lane. Yes. I think the uh, uh, Ban of the Viper is a pretty solid choice. Maybe even the Ban of a Venno uh, could be a key factor, because that's one of those areas that can definitely be a massive nuisance in the early to mid game. To really stomp you down. And I also am not the biggest fan of the Ember pick. Considering Inter just pick up a Kunkka. And Kunkka in the mid lane matchup against Ember. Wins about 75% of the time. Because you just keep on whipping him. And Ember can't do anything about it. Well, it's interesting that you say that. Because I've seen it mostly go 50-50. The Ember pushing waves really fast and the Kunkka being unable to take off the Flame Guard. But you're right, actually. That if you can keep up the pressure, then the Kunkka just wins it. And it just goes back for the Medusa. You're up first is a Tiny, most likely. Dreamers just left it completely open again. They were like, no, we need to ban the Gyrocopter. First of all, who plays Gyrocopter? Second of all, well, actually, FCR plays Gyrocopter. Second, Second of all, <laughs> you can one-shot a gyrocopter. You've got Nyx Assassin to make him stun himself because he's got stupid AoE. It's mm -hmm. decent in that regard, but, like, Dusa is so hard to kill. She is. At the very least, the Nyx Assassin mana burn does a decent amount of work, but you can just go non-stats-based Medusa. You buy that SNK instead of the um, Manta style. You go for a Butterfly. Uh, instead of your Scotty, all that good stuff. Well, with the Dreamer's uh, last pick. Offlane against Dusa and dying. What wins? <laughs> DK, no. <laughs> Beastmaster, okay. I mean... You are on the timer, you know you're on the timer, and you pick up one of the best heroes when you have to start pushing buildings very quickly. So the Beastmaster, pretty reasonable in that regard. His minions do get absolutely destroyed by Interiors, but that's another point. Yeah, I do not think you go Zoo Beastmaster here. You probably need to follow up on your Nyx Assassin most of all. But the, the, the synergy with the rest of your lineup is okay. You've got a ton of vision on Dreamers now, you've got the um the extra attack speed are for the tiny who could really use that i don't think i've seen any tinies do very well without any sort of like synergy in the team so welcome pick up here and i i do always like seeing a beastmaster so they're they've got some playmaking options they got some tower pushing options this is, this is probably the best that they could do but man does it feel rough definitely does not seem to be the most fortuitous uh you are on a t i mean the timer is a pretty slim one tiny what same timing about 25 minutes i hope that you are ahead at that point though i do think that their draft definitely looks more solid in the fact that they can dominate the, the, the early game the early to mid game as well compared to Luna who doesn't really want to do any committal to an engagement. Um, the Ember Spirit can be very uh, elusive in that regard. You've got the Nyx scouting around. You've got the Hawks from the Beastmaster to give vision. So they should be able to find this Dusa a lot more than they could last game. I completely agree with that. It just really relies on the Beastmaster being able to help get some towers down. And they are fairly short range. I am worried if this Pangolier has a good game, it's going to be so hard for Dreamer to set up on now any kind of tower resumes. kill at all. But will it follow the same thread? Will it follow the same thread? Indeed. Now, I am actually. Yeah, I. I. I I'm curious, Kips. What team do you think is going to be able to take game number two? Mm, as much as I like Dreamer's tools this time around, and as much as it pings me to root against the Beastmaster here, I don't think they have hard enough of a draft win that I can say, like, yeah, your your timing is going to work out here. There's a ton of wave clear over on Interitus. They've already shown their patience with that Medusa. I, I am feeling more Interitus Dusa here. Okay. I mean, it does. Uh, it, 
like it's easier to execute by far mm -hmm. because dreamers need to constantly keep putting on the pressure they need to win the lanes they need to do their utmost so i'm gonna go with the dreamers i think this might just be a three map series three game series maps is csgo dk come on <laughs> it's always the same map <laughs> Boring game, frankly. Yeah. Just oh. like chess, always the same board. Yeah, that hasn't changed for a stupid long time. Come on, update the game, guys. And then they made checkers. Oh, no, bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> oh, D-Flash. Being chased. Two boars plus Blake. The harass, he doesn't even feel it. He does not. Ooh, the wolf. Uh, Yay, boar, sorry. Yay, he gets the kill. Is it quarter to level two though? Like, do not discount the boar experience. They actually matter quite a lot in this early phase of the game. Draken cannot afford to give too many of them away. It is a pretty rough lane. This D flash and dying should have the time of his life. Didn't go for the boots, but he is up against two Malis who are not necessarily okay. Well, Nick Sasson did buy himself boots of speed as well. Yep. And he is demonstrating exactly why right now, because he needs to go hijack <laughs> some of these creeps and get them to behind the tower where either a dragon can come take him or where he can get some levels and then dragon gets the next wave once it has been pushed back into the tower. So, FCR taking the dire wave for a walk now, trying to meet them up behind the tower instead of letting her wave get killed. Typical speed wave for shenanigans here, and now Draken is still in a bad position. But at least Blake gets some new speed. At least you can get your moving ward a little bit sooner. And top lane, there's definitely kill threat on both sides. I mean, they've got stuns, they've a lot of stuns, a lot of damage. A oh. couple of mistakes to be made and you could get easily killed off with a nice Inkswell Avalanche or a Cookie plus Swashbuckle combo. Yep, Hijack needs to play this one very carefully. He should be fine here as long as he just keeps his Swashbuckle in reserve. And Pimp might have to secure some range creeps here and there. But Hijack cannot take the fight on directly into this duo, as is going to be demonstrated here. <laughs> no gold for you. Oh yeah, indeed, Jimmy does get first blooded top. Pimp gets the kill secured. I was just watching mid for a second because Murdoch was like faking that he'd whip. And then Miji slight defisted to try and dodge it. And then Murdoch just throws out the old high five. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, fam. Down low, too slow. Draken's got a total of three creep kills so far, but a massive wave joining him for a good farming frenzy. Finally. Uh, Beastmaster definitely does need his levels. <laughs> um. Honestly, the lanes are all going pretty A-OK -okay right now. First blood in favor of Interitus. Murdoch is doing a pretty decent job in mid. Of course, can farm up the side camp very easily as well. Another game where the side camp has not been counterwarded. Step lively now. Your admiral yep, is on in board. general, nobody really making their way over towards the enemy Dying side of the map before the horn. Uh, very conservative. Draken, of course, going for the helm of the Dominator. With the Overlord late, the Tombstone gets dropped. They're going to go in for the Beast ma uh, Master kill. Slow him down. Can he get himself back? Throws out the boar. Save my life. Draken barely survives and gets himself out of dodge. Uh, Blake's a good support. Had that self save up just for this occasion. Draken gets to live. And he's got the Helm of Iron Will now. That's going to do a great deal for him in the lane versus the Medusa. That extra armor really changes the lane around, but it, you know, it won't do that much versus the Undying still. It's still fairly annoying. D Flash does not have Flash. any mangoes left though, so that's the only big downside for the uh, Undying. Uh, he should go feed. 
Just, just feed. Empty mana pool. <laughs> feed. I mean, Hijack's not getting that much more farm in return. FCR is being slowed. Does have the uh, mana shield. Throws out the snake. And under the tower, he walks. But the Blake actually taking some tower hits in the return. While top lane, they lose Pimp. Hijack will be able to swash back to safety. But uh, 1k lead right now for the Dreamers. Yep. With that Ember Spirit taking a little bit of a smacking in mid as well. You cannot really stand versus the Kunkka if the Kunkka gets a good enough start. Got a Bracer as well, actually. Oh, Blake just suicided towards tier 2. I was thinking... Oh no, T tours again. DK missed the kill, but he did. That one doesn't count. <laughs> no, the nice don't count. Okay, Tiny no surprise. Echo Saber for item. Link mm -hmm. Dagger is kind. It's kind of a rough Link Dagger game, of course, because you are up against an undying. Mhm. Mm kind of wonder about that. You, you might want to go for the SP instead. Uh, you've also got a Kunga on your team who would not be opposed to, uh, or sorry, on the enemy team. Excuse me. There's, it's it's hard to use it as anything else than a repositioning tool this game. You're not going to get much initiation out of it. Kunga. No Bottom. Going in for Draken. And Blake. Tombstone was dropped. He flash just kept walking circles around the trees until the rotation came in from Murdoch to get an easy double. Man. And yeah, the Ember Spirit would really rather not get involved in fights like that. Way too far away from his tower. He's waiting until the enemy pushes in somewhere so he can do the same. But Pangalier lane? Uh, he's not even six yet. And he's not going to go for a push, he's going to go for a dive. Well, As there's the silence. Glossing swell. It is It is a rough lane. I mean, in this case, he, he kind of couldn't really get out. But yeah, that that's kind of what you could expect. Silence. Yep. Stun, stun, stun. Dead. <laughs> I forgot to mention that, actually, that the Phantom Embrace is very good. Versus a pangolier. And of so course, Soulbind. Later yep, on. Soulbind as well. That's of course the uh, old classic counter against Pango. They first face pick the Pango and they immediately counter it up with uh, well, one of the hero two heroes actually. They do also have a roar on the Beastmaster, so they have two BKB piercing effects, which are pretty nasty for Pango to deal with. And also, the Nyx is pretty decent later on with the mana burn against the Deuce. It's not like super damage, but every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. yeah, there used to be a time where as soon as the Nyx Assassin was on the board, Medusa's would just not be kicked anymore, but that is really not the case any longer. Well, Kuka is top net with at the moment, but Murdoch's right on his heels. You also have FCR having a pretty reasonable lane bottom. So now that the Beastmaster is very pretty much done with his helm, he uh, yeah he, the lane becomes even rough for Dusa, and he just farms faster in the jungle currently. Top lane, they're gonna go in on Kuka X Mark Go Ship, gonna connect onto the tiny Rolling Thunder as well. That's hijack. Go in hand, the tombstone slow is too much to handle. They find the kill, make that two. However, rotation in from Miji, they're looking for the Murdoch catch. Miji, nice sleight of fist dodge of the stun. It might just be a second one. Indeed, it is. The tombstone is gone in the process. They're still continuing the fight. Hijack does not have any mana. Can he get out? The stun won't connect on him, but he will find the kill. Minji with a triple and D-Flash going for the TP to safety. Double damage. Ember still hurts. Absolutely. And that is the opportunity he was waiting for under his own tower. He was already halfway together with the Nyx in the rotation when the gank came into top, so beautifully predicted as well. It's just a shame that he's a little bit too late to save his carry, but I I think he's fine with that. That's going to be a pretty fast javelin. His team in that fight did a combined damage of about 600, and he did 2870 <laughs> damage. Sometimes you're just an Ember Spirit in a in a pretty good Ember Spirit fight. 
Ooh, bottom. They catch Blake. Will they be able to hold him down, though? Silence. There's Miji joining the fray. Murdoch is in trouble. They also catch out D-Flash. He drops Tombstone on the high ground, but they're going to get both. And with that, also a nice free Tombstone. So that's easy money made. Undo 50 for Draken. That's a, that's a couple nice. of very good engagements here for Dreamers. It is, and he is actually going in with almost a Dominator build as well, so not even scared of the creep clear. We're just going to be aiming for that, well, if you're lucky, 60 minute timing for a Helm of the Overlord and shove, shove, shove. If he hits that, that is going to be in a point of time where Interitus has very little straight up damage to run it down. Definitely does help the Midgies just making some really good rotations. Oh, yeah. Dyer's top tower. FCR in mid. Stun, mana burning, swell silence, boom, nothing he can do. He's completely stuck. Murdoch has a ghost ship, could use it to keep FCR alive. They actually could keep him to the side. I am standing. They get the kill on Tamiji. He didn't even use ghost ship. Why didn't he use ghost ship? <laughs> I, I don't know, but it, well, it, it works. Better to game than us. Yeah. But it shouldn't have. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Blake is just going in for the kill. Alright, FCR take a little bit more damage. Oh, sentry. Oh. Ah, uh, there's Blake. I was already wondering where you were. <laughs> Look, I was watching a Grimstroke die on the side and you were like, Blake going in for the kill. Where the hell is Blake? <laughs> uh, he was sneaking in for that deuce on the backside. But, you know, you know what? I think what did the trick there was the possessed mask. So I was wondering where does where is this Dusa getting her lifesteal for from? But she was hitting several targets with a possessed pack. Easy healing, I Jack. Bottom lane, Tombstone gets dropped. There is also Pimp joining in. He's got the kisses of death. There is no spike Erebus, but they'll just shotgun him out of existence on the side dragon as well. Be lurking, but there's a smoke gang, Miji and Jimmy Cough, dynamic duo, Grim Ember, Inkswell, plus uh, Soulbind is not leveled, but it is because he's not level six yet. They will find themselves D Flash, and the Undying can't really respond. Miji, jeez, how aggressive! Zero respect on this guy, but then again, what exactly does he need to respect this game? The, the Kunka lane was a little bit rough, a bit, maybe a little bit rougher than I thought it would be, but he is over that right now. He's in his lane and thriving, moisturized, unbothered, <laughs> aggressive as all hell. He can dodge every single thing they can throw at him. He's uh, loving life, but of course the downside with all those rotations is that the net and top net worth position has been picked up by FCR. The gank towards mid really not do dreamers that good. And you do not want the Dusa at the top because, well, you know, we've talked about it a multitude of times. 25 minutes in, Dusa top net worth. Game's over. Smoke here towards Draken. I got a I... good idea of where he is. X mark. Go ship on top. The kisses of death. And an easy pickup. Smack him down. His army <laughs> coming to deal some chip damage onto mid, but that's, uh, yeah. This is what happens to the army in this game. They have a lot to deal with it. They are looking for FCR aggressively. Another smoke coming out from the Dreamers, but FCR is heading towards the tier 1 tower top. There is no teammate nearby. However, this pause is a very interesting point in the game. Because I think Kuka's being spotted at the very least. Does he know that they're coming in from behind? Hmm. I don't think so. His entire team has TPs. And there is a rolling thunder. So there's a decent chance he's going to get out alive here. Interesting that he's going for the Manta style, by the way. I guess that he just needs it too much. Versus, for example, the Ember Chains to dodge stuff like uh, the ink swell stun that sort of thing to skip it but that will be extra damage for the nyx mana burn because it is intelligence base and the plus 10 all attributes is definitely going to add to that pull for him 
You know what I love, Chips? The fact that if you hold your mouse over Phantoms and Brace, it says cannot be dispelled un unless you have a face shifting dispel, like Manta style. So it does work. So they lied. There is a rotation from Deep Flash. Drops the Tomb so right on top of them. Is trying to keep FCR alive. Soulbind comes out. Will cost uh, the Dusa's life. The Soulbind actually turns its attention to the Pangolier, which is a little bit problematic. Midji in the middle of his TP gets caught. Jimmy Cough is going to lose his life, and Midji does not have a remnant alive to disengage. Oh, no. So they get the Dusa, but at what cost? Everything. Step lively now. Your uh, is on they get two other cores out. Cuckoo is farming. It's not the worst, the but yeah, very smart TP from Hijack on the second tower there so that he would not get caught in the Soulbind immediately. Uh, unfortunately for him, the Dusa dies before he actually gets there to turn it around, but still, that's a blink dagger now for him. Armlet for the Kunkka. The support troops for Interitus have everything they need right now to just keep that game going until the Medusa is big, and that's... We're, we're gonna stay at this for a while. Yeah, it's the, they kind of need to find the deuce every single time. I, we did, of course, brush up on the fact that they have a lot of scouting material mm -hmm. on the Dreamer side. However, it does... Uh, it costs a lot of effort to get to that point. Hijack cutting all those creepers while Murdoch's going deeper for the one that wields them. Find the Peace Master. No, he can't. They're just going to get themselves easy hundred bucks. Uh, why, why, why get the kill if he's just going to bring the buffet to you, you know? But even though smoke. this feels like it's not that big of a win. Yeah, it was a smoke. But... It also means that this Beastmaster, who is supposed to be bothering this bottom lane, poking at that tier 2 tower, rotating in for your mid tower, he has lost his army twice now. And every time he builds it back up, there's just another rotation from Interitus. And this space that he needs to be creating is not appearing oh, right gee. now. So yeah, you gotta BG up in there now. Dyer's middle tower. MEG, he does have his Millstrom finally delivered. It feels like he could have had it done a lot sooner, but two unfortunate deaths and mainly just looking for fights the entire time cost them dearly. That is kind of the point that they're at. Hi, Jack. Oh, the sun doesn't come out in time. The kisses on top. Jimmy Cough in trouble. Soulbind has been used, but it doesn't matter because no one is there to tie it up. And they find a quick uh, kill onto Jimmy. However, they're looking for hijack. And a Blink Dagger actually on the Tiny this time around. Okay. <laughs> Alright. I respect that they're throwing him into the fray here. And that kill meant that Draken could take the mid tower. This is way more like it. For Dreamers. And now it's going to start to get hard to keep that triangle under control without the mid tower there. Doomstone. Yes. Can't really fight in the area anymore. So... Need to disengage. Actually, FCR bounces onto the Hawk to make sure there's more damage on Blake. That, that min-maxing right there is just nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, skeleton army dies again. It's kind of wild to see the whole plants versus zombies thing going on with the Beastmaster army on one end and the tombstone on the other. God. I've played that game so many times. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Memories. Good memories. Good old days. Cry crying tall nuts, holding strong. Those were the days. So right now, I mean, that's kind of what Interitors are playing. They're playing that defense. Keep the farm alive. Keep the FCR Medusa farm alive. He does have the Manta style. He's going for the... Scotty immediately, this time no dragon lands. There is a jump onto the undying, but it is a position. Five undying, who dies? Who cares? Blake looking for more. But FCR is already on the other side of the middle path, so uh, they're a little bit too far away. They're going to head into Roche with the double damage on the tiny, though. That is a pretty nice pickup, but it does get scanned immediately. And you are up against the Pango, who immediately breaks the smoke. <laughs> oh, well. You might be up against the Pango, but you also have the Helm of the Overlord ready on the Beastmaster. That is a dangerous oh, fight. Oh, that's all bind. 
That is a huge one. Blake dropping low. The roar comes out. Murdoch is going to lose his life. Hijack is still rolling in the area. They are walking out of the pit, which is very scary considering it was almost dead. Tombstone gets dropped. The tiny, he's just going to get chased down by an army of zombies. And FCR might want to try and turn the damage around. But Jimmy Goff is dead. This area is dangerous. Why did they walk out of Roche with, like, no HP left on the Roche? Presumably to catch the pango before he got there. I mean, which Grimshog did that, and then why did the tiny? League? I mean, they're they're getting it regardless because they still won the fight. But you could also just like Grimshog soulbind, walk back into the pit, finish it off. Yep. And you can see here, by the way, the synergy between that tiny and the beast master. Because not only do you have the max level inner beast now, you also have the ancient thunderhides coming in with their frenzy. I believe the ability is called. Is. That tiny can slap. Well, that tiny definitely needs to slap. He's going for the BKB next. It's not going to take that long. I mean, he does also slap buildings together with the Beastmaster. So, uh, now this is the time for the Dreamers to really abuse that Aegis. And another scouting tactic from Blake. Successful hijack is spotted and a huge kill added to boot. Everything's coming up Dreamers right now. This is 20 minutes. They're looking to assault the enemy high ground. This Medusa does not have a Scotty. Uh, this is the game that they wanted to have previously and it's working out for another heat. Oof, that's a nice one from Kuka using the Bling Dagger, getting the toss back. Roar on top, they get the kill and uh, no Kunka, no Pango, which are their arguably strongest high ground defenders taken yeah, out of the here. equation. Make that D flash for the third. He did drop the tombstone. He's silenced, he can't heal. <laughs> Man, and this is what a timing push looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Done into perfection by the dreamers. Vision, Vision, Aegis, Roche, Trax. Yep, I'm really loving that Blink Dagger pickup on the Tiny. I do think that that was by far the best possible choice he could have made. I've seen so many tinies go for the shadow blade, be a little bit late to the party, and then constantly be scrambling to catch up to heroes, and he just has none of that problem right now. Yeah, the uh, big surprise factor coming into play, FCR very close to his Ayascati, so it, it is getting still a little bit dangerous for Dreamers. You lose one fight, and they're completely back into the game, and even if yes. you secure Megas, you're up against Dusa and Akunka. Like, they've got plenty of wave clear inside of Interitus. Mm -hmm. So this game definitely is uh, one of those it's not over till it's over kind of situations. Much unlike the previous one. Yeah, no, that one was over ages ago. <laughs> Radiant bottom tower is under Blake spotted, or no, he got dusted, but not spotted. Radiant's bottom tower is no more. Scotty is finished you saw only one rex down for the scotty finish it's not where you want to be but it's good enough to now hold i wonder if they're going to even try to death this mid tower i probably think it's too risky yeah the tier two should be just easy pickup they're not that far ahead like a 21 minute game 5k net worth is easy breachable fcr is going for the daedalus next i mean the next big timing for the deuce is going to be that level 25. Hey, if he, she hits level 25, anyone that gets close gets shredded. Yeah, look at Hijack again, though. This man, previous game, he knew his do job description. This game as well. He was just kiting that wave there so that the Medusa could take all of the last hits instead of losing them so some of them to the tower. Like, this Pango is not taking anything away from his carry right now. What a trooper. That does mean that they're going to be choked out. Hiding yes. on the high ground, maybe until the age is gone, they uh, they could feel a little bit more comfortable walking about. But yeah, with the vision gain, you see the hawk here. You've got Nyx assassin, pretty much always keeping an eye on his opponents. It is rough to even walk out the base at this point. Yep. This is this is how you want to be playing a Nyx game. This is how you want to be playing a Beastmaster game, but that high ground remains and as soon as that Aegis is gone like right now the Dusa doesn't have any damage for the tiny 
but she's gonna get there at some point and you're going to have to find a solution before that point in time. Now, I wonder if Dreamers is just kind of hoping that Interatus is going to go after them, so much move more. outside of the base, give them another opportunity for some nice tossbacks, give Miji some space to work with. He's got another double now. damage Your move. Is on board. This uh, Kunkka needs to be careful. They have a Yule Scepter on the Nyx. Like, you try that X Mark walkout one more time, you get Yules, you're done. <laughs> oh, he's got a BKB. <laughs> You yeah. can have the BKB and walk out, but you, you really don't want to spend that, do you? Yeah, and then you get roared. <laughs> or soulbound. Oh, they're gonna yeah. go in on Draken. Rolling Thunder comes out. Turn it around. They need the soulbind. Miji with the double damage coming through onto D-Flash. Draken is still alive, gets the roar off. But that is the soulbind coming out a little bit too late to the party. Miji with the BKB. It's now ended, and they need to disengage because the Tombstone, it is one of the deadliest things in this game. However, the Avalanche Toss coming out from Kuka. The damage coming through. Deuce ulti being used. They buy back onto the Pango, get themselves back in the fray. Blake on the side will be able to disengage. That double damage from Miji has done a lot of work, and Murdoch will be able to disengage, but... The damage is still coming through because Kuka is not done just yet. Hijack. Hijack would be a dieback if he falls. Can he get out? He the toss forward and Miji is a nice pebble on his face. FCR will be able to disengage, but a fat juicy team fight win for the side of the Dreamers. Yep, and it started off pretty bad for them, but Kuka coming back in with a massive damage. Really turning things around there. That said. Medusa once again escaping, once again adding another item to the list. They're getting there. Slowly, surely, they're getting there. Uh, they are. <laughs> but there's definitely also a threat of a little bit too much net worth. I mean, the amount of time it took them to kill off that Beastmaster was not... I mean, he he's reasonably tanky, but he's not like unkillable levels of tankiness. And it took them forever to get that Beastmaster kill. It did, and next time they're not even going to have the magic damage to do it with because he's finishing off his BKB at a pretty frightening speed. Four staff for the support now as well. Great repositioning for Stedusa. I don't think Interitus is going to get another opportunity to get a good fight outside of their base. Yeah, high ground defense seems to be the name of the game. Uh, also, it's <laughs> if you check out D Flash, he's got seven kills so far this game. That pretty much shows you exactly how much streamers have been focusing down his tombstone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drop that it and dip. Time. 30 seconds until Roche might respawn. That secondary row should be... I mean, if Dreamers manage to secure it, probably will be the end. It could very well be. This Dusa just has no damage yet. I'm pretty close, though. But really needs that level 25 talent, and that is going to take quite a significant amount of time. And it's such a big problem in this game, because you don't want to hold hands with the Dusa in order to avoid soaking up all the levels that she so desperately needs, but this is Beast or Nyx Assassin you're talking about. If you leave her alone, she's just going to get sniped. And not as survivable, doesn't have a BKB to disengage. Even with the BKB, disengaging is pretty rough. They've got lots of lockdown slows and stuns. On the dreamers, even if you think you might have gotten out, you always have that toss back with the blink dagger on the tiny. That could be the uh, extra nail in the coffin. Kuka, in the meantime, has finished up a full silver edge, so he went for both. Mm -hmm. FCR, they're so close. They're all around him. They have the vision as well from the observer ward. Hijack rolling in, trying to get the lockdown. He needs to stay away from the Grim. So can he get the kill onto Blake? Yes, indeed. Blake is already dead, but they do did use three ultis for that Nyx assassin. So that means run and dip. While in the meantime, Kuka is trying to split push bottom. Thank you, little devil. <laughs> oh, Murdoch. I don't know exactly what you wanted to do. Neither did he. Blake, there's the Soulbind coming out onto two. Double Roar coming Double out, pushes roar. them away. 
And that's going to be a double kill secured. Up on the high ground, FCR will go for the TP attempt, but yeah, no interrupted. FCR should be easy pickings from that point. He got knocked up the high ground, and that should be game. Like, they can just destroy the entire Radiant base. Yeah, with Beastmaster Tiny, this is going to go in the blink of an eye. I don't think Atertus is going to give up quite yet, though. Just in case dreamers get distracted by something. Ooh, something shiny. Yeah, squirrel. I don't know. Ah, uh, Up was a great movie. I love that dog. I mean, Up in general does not love that movie, actually. You could just leave. Just get out. You're not friends with any of us if you don't like that movie. <laughs> Pixar at its finest. I assume it's Pixar. It's probably Pixar. Should be, yes. Why, why do you make me doubt that? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking it's most it's likely Pixie, DreamWorks. Pixar. DreamWorks does, like, some movies. I mean, they, they did Shrek, I think. But now I'm also doubting that. Uh, no, no, I, I, I checked it. This is what you do. You just check it. As soon as your play-by-play -play makes you doubt something, the analyst goes straight to the internet. <laughs> the more you know. And uh, yeah, this is second Roche Aegis charred. Time to finish off this game. Time to finish it off in the, the do south. Do you sell your boots for the finished Daedalus here? You sell everything by rapier. Let's go! <laughs> if you had access to the secret shop, but you very don't. No, you're gonna you're gonna hope that you get like this wave here, and you don't have to sell anything. Yeah. Chip, chip, chip. Deadless. Yay! So the roar on to Murdoch in a bit of bother. Soul by on to two. They do drop the tombstone on top of them. Stun comes out. There's the Ava toss combo. They get yeeted on top of each other. A lot of damage. Dusa ulti was used though. They need to look away. And the tombstone's actually doing a lot of work here with the buyback coming out from the snap fire. That tombstone's a nuisance. It's huge. You think I can take it down now while everybody's in the fountain? <laughs> massive. Blake. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> the banner was dropped down on the floor and Blake quickly uh, drops the yules underneath it. Nonetheless, there's a quick catch onto the Dusa. I mean, this is pretty much waiting for the inevitable, and that is indeed it. G to the G. It will be in Territus. Losing game number two and taking us to game number three will be the Dreamers, who are still trying to keep themselves in Division 2, if not advance on to Division 1. Yeah, and this will teach me for rooting against the Beastmaster. I normally never do that. That previous game was so convincing. I'm like, eh, you know, another Medusa. What could go wrong? Well, lots of things could go wrong. Uh, Jimmy did excellent work versus the Pangolier on that uh, Grimstroke. We saw a beautiful acceleration coming out from Draken and Blake. And then um, the Tiny coming in with a Blink Dagger as well. On top of the fact that Miji was having such a good game, you were saying the draft like all right everything needs to come together for dreamers for it to work but i think we just got an example of what that kind of game looks like because this was stellar work from every single one of them and interiors just didn't really stand a chance at the end there 